Good morning, everybody. Uh, welcome back to another Today in Tarkov, or afternoon or evening, I guess, depending on where you're at. But we'll talk some about more Nikki leaks. Now, I, I'm not, don't give me credit for that word, Nikki leaks. I didn't come up with it. And I honestly don't know where I heard it first. It was probably either a nice guy or who knows. I, nonetheless, not my, my, not taking credit for it, but I'm going to use it because it's, it's funny. So, Nikki leaks, uh, we get another picture of the house. Um, uh, background of the picture of Nikita pointing his 1911 at his monitor. Not sure what that's about. Maybe he was just in a raid uh, where he got shot by a shotgun scav, head eyes, you know, full of loot, and is doing what all of us think about doing when that happens. You know, going Summit 1G on our monitors, but with a back-to-back -back World War champ uh, 1911. Eh, maybe that's just me. Anyways, uh, on top of that, there's a pretty big bug to report I want to point out. Now, I don't normally do these. I don't normally talk about the bugs a lot because I don't like them getting abused. But this one's pretty widespread, well known, and I don't want you dying or having something bad happen to you because you didn't know about it. Uh, right now, there's currently a bug where bushes and water do not slow you down like they used to. You know, if you go walk through water or, or the swamp on shoreline, you you know, you, you got suction cups for feet and you sound like a squid or, you know, you run into a bush and you just come to a dead stop. That's not happening right now. It's in a bug acknowledged by BSG. They're working on a fix. Hopefully we'll see it soon. Um, the big place that I think this has a huge impact is in reserve down in the bunkers by, D, you know, not the D2 power switch, the water there between White Bishop and the uh, command center or whatever. With that water being that way, it has the potential to really change how fights go down down there. So keep in mind, if you're fighting down there, the water does not slow people down. And I've even heard people say that if you're sprinting, it doesn't make noise. It doesn't make the water noise. So keep a sharp eye out for that and make sure you don't get caught with your pants down. On top of that, we just got a really cool tweet from BSG showing some of the statistics from the Scav Brotherhood event, which it's cool that it has a name now. I just called it the fence event, but Scav Brotherhood, I guess. Um, which uh, showed all this, a bunch of different stats with how, you know, how many raids were run, how many scavs, uh, people ran as scavs, things like that. Uh, according to BSG, we saw a 41% spike in player scavs, killing AI scavs or other player scavs, uh, which kind of makes sense considering you made a lot of people hostile and not have a choice but to shoot back if they were getting shot by scavs. Uh, it it kind of ramped up the scav on scav violence, I think, which, uh, I'm wondering if that was their goal or not, because they seem to be focusing on that in this statistic. But nonetheless, go take a peek. Let me know what you think these numbers mean down below in the comments. It's kind of cool to see what your guys' thoughts are. Uh, most of the time, you guys have really cool insight to this stuff, and I, I, I really enjoy reading it. Uh, and more importantly with this, what I think it shows is that there is purpose to these events, um, and they're looking at stats, and they're looking at things that come out of this. They're not just throwing a hunk of meat into a swimming pool with piranhas and watching the churn. They're, they're paying attention to how the fast the meat gets eaten, you know, what parts are left behind. So it's still throwing meat into the piranhas, but at least they're getting something out of it. It's not just our misery that they do it for. And hopefully in the future, we'll get some of these stats on the economy. I would love to see the inside or the, the behind the scenes stats on some of the stuff in the economy, you know, with looting and selling and turnover on the flea market and, you know, how much money gets sunk in money sinks and all that kind of stuff. I mean, I, I'd literally sell my full Bitcoin farm to fence to get that information. I mean, don't actually hold that to me, BSG, or maybe hold me to it. I don't know. We'll see. But anyways, we'll get past this. We'll get into talking about some loot and some crafting. Okay, so for loot, I want to talk about here real quick is ammo today and some ammos that I think people are skipping over that they shouldn't be when you find them in raid that are actually worth in their bigger stacks more than a lot of other loot you'll find. The first one we'll talk about is BP, 545 BP to be specific. Now you'll find this in guns, uh, in the mags of, of guns you find it like an AK. If you find an AK-74 in a crate and it's got a mag in it, it's probably got BP. Uh, almost always uh, any kind of 545 AK. So make sure you check that because a stack of 60 of this, which is what you can stack out, is worth nearly 20,000 rubles, more if you can sell it higher. So even BP ammo, which you might think, oh, that's sucky ammo, why would I keep that? It's worth more than, you know, a Keck tape or a condensed milk or any of these others out there uh, that you're gonna pick up normally without even thinking about it. So keep that in mind. The next one was Luger CCI. Now this is big because, you know, you'll get this off of Raiders on labs a lot or on reserve. Um, you know, Gluhar and his guns, this Luger CCI can be worth quite a bit. Now it's not as lucrative as some others, you know, you're talking 12 to 15,000 rounds for a full 50 stack of this, but it's definitely something worth considering. Uh, if you don't have better loot, this can be worth quite a bit, especially if you can push that 300 
um, 310 ruble per round limit. Now you're talking, you know, 20,000 per stack close to that. So keep that in mind. And then lastly, this is one of my favorites, uh, PBM. I always look for this ammo. The boxes are distinct. Um, the nine by 18 boxes are distinct and I'm always looking for it. It come, the boxes have 16 rounds in them. You'll find them in other stuff. I don't know that I've ever found it in firearms as an ammo in the mag, but a 50 stack of PBM is worth 20,000 rubles or more. So much so that this can actually be a good craft and it spikes up and down. It goes high and low constantly. So you just got to be patient. Sell at the 400 or the 450 ruble mark. Don't sell at the 200 mark and it's going to be worth picking up. With that quick bit out of the way, let's talk crafts like we always do. We've seen a slight shift in the workbench, but here's our daily crafts. You got wires, Lucky Scav Junk Box, Super Water. Make sure you're crafting your Super Waters. They're doing great now because filters are so cheap. Uh, you got your meds, Intelligence, which took over from VPX. Uh, Moonshine isn't making money and nothing in the nutrition unit's making money. So we'll look at the workbench a little bit more in depth here. I have my favorite craft highlighted, of course, but wires. Now the key with wires, make sure you're getting them uh, your power cords for under 11k if you can do that you can sell wires for whatever and make good money you're not struggling to sell it you know right now it's saying 7600 average if you're selling for 8000 or 7500 you're fine if you're getting below 11k you can even go down to 7000 and do better than most anything else in the workbench which just makes it easy to turn stuff over uh, for me personally i'm really enjoying the green gunpowder craft right now because of how easy it is and how much profit it makes you know i'll craft two or three of these and then sell them in a stack of two or three and boom all of a sudden you got 200,000 rubles that you weren't even realizing were there Circuit boards, magnets, doing good. Uh, kind of with the magnets, it's kind of same thing as the power cords. Make sure you're getting your hard drives for less than 11K and you're gonna be doing just fine there. Capacitors, if you were crafting those, because yesterday I told you to and the day before I told you to, don't panic because they've fallen down the list. Just get a big stack and sell them higher. At the end of the day, they will sell when people are going after their defibs. In the laboratory, again, Lucky Scav Junk Box is at the top, but if you're after crafting four skills, you need to do something that cycles faster over and over again. Quick, 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 quick. Uh, Bleach is doing good right now. It's had a huge jump up and you can even do better than what's showing on here right now, especially if you push 10 or 11K with your bleaches, which I've seen them do the last day. Uh, this video might blow that up, but nonetheless, try to take advantage of it best you can, especially if you're getting sodiums out of raid, soaps out of raid, or you're able to get them much cheaper than you're seeing right here. You will do really good with bleach. For me, I'm still sticking with my scav vests and my slings, just a personal preference. It's not that they're making a lot of money, but they cycle quick, they fit with my raid times well, and they're pretty easy to do. But if you're doing the scav vest barter, make sure you're bartering with the uh, Jaeger level one barter for slickers. Of course, we'll beat that dead horse like we do every day. Uh, med station, nothing crazy to talk about here. Meds and AI2s are gonna constantly shift back and forth with one another. You know, it just kind of depends on where you sell your AI2s and what you buy your meds for for that. And then again, on the med side, you know, are you pulling augmentants out of raid? Are you buying them real cheap when somebody lists them? Whatever you're doing, um, those are the two main crafts. SJ6 can make you money. They're great if you get the SJ1 out of raid, um, on non-found in raid, or you get uh, NACL, NACLs out of raid, out of raid, non-found in raid. That's about the only time I would recommend using them is if you have those two components, it's something to use to get some more value out of them, but that's about it. And then again, defibs for the long craft. And as far as others, again, like always, uh, your Lucky Scab Junk Box is your, lo your long craft on your laboratory, and then your BP is your long craft on your workbench. And the last one is the uh, nutrition unit. Nothing to craft here that'll make you money. If you're going after grinding uh, for tasks, your, your tasks. If you're going after grinding for your skill progression like I am, right now I'm crafting Williston's and Slickers because the Williston's lose me the least amount of money. Uh, slickers I can use in the barter for the scav vest. And then occasionally I'll throw a whiskey in there because I'm working my way towards a thick case barter using the uh, whiskey for that barter with therapist. So that's pretty much it. We're wrapped up there for the day. I hope this is helpful. I hope you enjoyed uh, the news and get some stuff out of the crafting. A thank you to the Patreons as always and their support. And a thank you to you for watching the video. Couldn't do it without you guys. So truly thank you for being a part of this process. We'll see you in the next video.